Hi everyone, welcome back. I thought it could be useful if I went over a math example involving all three types of energy, so kinetic, potential, and mechanical energy, just to reinforce the concepts and maybe to clarify matters a little bit for some of you. So let's take a look at the following question. So it says, Jessica builds a model track for her little brother. She places a toy bus with a mass of 0.5 kilogram at point A, which we have over here, and gives it a velocity of two meters per second. Calculate the kinetic potential and mechanical energies at points A, B, and C. The height at point A is 0.5 meters and at point B is 0.1 meter. The speed at point C is 3 meters per second. So for all three points, you need to find the mechanical, the kinetic, and the potential energies. So how do we go about this? First, we need to list the three different equations we're going to be using. So I've written them down here. So we have EK, which is kinetic energy is equal to one half mv squared. Then we have EP for potential energy, which is equal to mgh. And then we have EM for mechanical energy is equal to kinetic plus potential energies. Now you have the sketch of the situation over here. Normally in the problem, it should be provided to you, but if it's not, it would be a good idea, obviously, to sketch what the problem is talking about, so you have a visual idea as to what's going on. Now, now that we have the sketch and that we have the three equations we're going to be working with, what's the next step? Well, we need to list the information that we have. Since we need to calculate for A, B, and C, what the potential kinetic and mechanical energies are, what we should do is list the information according to those points, point A, point B, point C, and you will see that I color-coded things just to make it easier to follow because there is a lot of info to um, work with. So point A will be in blue. What do we know about point A from the question? Well, first of all, we know that the mass is 0.5 kilograms. So obviously that will apply to all three points. The, toy, the toy's mass doesn't change along the way. At point A, the velocity is 2 meters per second. So we know that, and we know that the height is 0.5 meters. So if we list the info, we get point A, 0.5 kilograms, 2 meters per second, and the height is 0.5. Then it says for B, the height is 0.1 meter. That's the only info that we have along with the mass. So this is what I've listed over here in red, point B, Mass is still 0.5 kilos and the height is 0.1 meters. And for point C, we know the speed, which is 3 meters per second, and obviously the mass is still 0.5 kilograms. Okay, so that's what we have for point C. So what's our next step? We're going to take each location one at a time and solve for the three values. So for point A, we have the mass, the velocity, and the height. If we take a look at our equations with mass and velocity, we can solve for the kinetic energy. We have everything we need for kinetic energy. We have the mass and we have the height. We know that this is hap happening on Earth, so the gravity is, uh, the value is 9.8. So we have everything we need to solve for EP. And with those two values, we'll be able to calculate the mechanical energy. So that is what I did over here. I did all three calculations. So EK is equal to 1 half mv squared. So the 1 half, I put 0.5 times half a kilo times the speed, which is 2 squared. It gives me 1 joule. So that's the energy, the kinetic energy of the toy. Then if I calculate the potential energy, I have m times g times h. I have all three values. This gives me 2.45 joules. And then I have my two values, 1 and 2.45. I know that if I add them up, I'll get the mechanical energy, which is 3.45. Now, this is great because now I know that my mechanical energy is supposed to stay the same all the time. It is a constant value for any given system. 
So 3.45 joules will be a constant value for my mechanical energy. That's going to be useful. So if I look at point B, what do I know? I know for point B, I have the mass and I have the height. All right, so now what? What can I calculate with that? Well, if I look at my equations, I have my mechanical energy, that's useful. If I have the height and the mass, I can calculate EP. Now, if I have EP and I have EM, look at this one over here, I have EP and I have EM, I can calculate EK. And you're gonna say, but well, why don't I just use this equation to calculate EK? I don't have the speed at point B, but I can go about it another way because I know the mechanical energy. So let me show you mathematically what this looks like. So now we're going to look at the red section. So we have the mass, which is 0.5. We have gravity, which is 9.8. And we were told that the height was 0.1 meters. So we calculate EP, which is 0.49 joules. We've already calculated the mechanical energy for point A, and we know that it's constant. So EM remains 3.45 joules. Once we have EM and EP, we can now do EM minus EP and find EK, right? Which is what I have over here. EK is equal to the mechanical energy minus the potential energy. And that gives me 2.96 joules. So now I have all three values for position B in the, um, in the, the, in the problem. Now, if we go to position C, point C, what do we know? We have the mass and we have the velocity. With the mass and velocity, we can calculate the kinetic energy. We already have the mechanical energy, and we know that when we have two out of three, we can solve for the third one very easily without having to jump through these hoops over here. Even if we don't have all of these values, it's fine. So we don't have actually the height at point C, we don't have H, so we couldn't calculate EP using this equation, but we can find it with this equation because we can calculate the kinetic energy first with the mass and the velocity, and we already know the value of the mechanical energy, so now we're fine, we can calculate EP. So let's take a look at the actual calculation. So we have EM, we already know is 3.45. EK is half the mass times the speed, which is 3 squared. We get 2.25 joules for the, potent, uh, the kinetic sorry, energy. And then we have kinetic and we have mechanical. So mechanical minus kinetic will give us the potential energy, which is 1.2 joules. So with a little bit of information by process of, not elimination, but a little bit more like a puzzle, finding bits and pieces here and there, we can find the big picture. We can find all the values that are missing for every point, every position in the sketch or in the problem provided. So I hope this was clear. I do suggest that you go over it a few times, try to do it on your own, pause the video, look at the math afterwards and get comfortable with this concept. You will probably come across other problems that are similar, but they always have the same pattern. If you understand this problem, you can solve for any similar problem that involves mechanical energy. So if you have questions, reach out. Otherwise, I'll see you around for your next lesson. And until then, take care.